Hello, Dork Squad. I'm Jonathan Cormer, and you're listening to Dork Tales Storytime, the podcast for kids and their pop culture-loving grown-ups. And this is an inspiring story about a hidden hero of history. It's a beautiful day for a story, adventure and glory, new friends and old ones too. It's an excellent day to get swept away in a tale, so let us regale you. Yeah, and just going to. Oh, out! Nope, that's all right. Oh! I, uh, no, not, not here either. I'm just gonna. Oh! Uh, oh! Uh, uh, no! Uh, 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 ow! Ow! Uh, 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 Reg? Yes? Ow! Jonathan? Oops. What is going on back there? <laughs> I'm trying to do some of Serena's calming breathing exercises. Ooh, that's a splendid idea. But it's a bit hard to focus on such a quiet activity when you're making so much noise. Oh, ah, uh, I, I, I'm sorry, Jonathan. I'm just looking through your library for your collected works of Quilliam Shakespeare. The Hedgehog Bard. Ah, right. But I'm having a hard time reading the titles of the books higher up on your shelves. Oh, I see. And while I'm squinting to find it, I keep... Uh, bumping into things. (laughs) Yes. I'm sorry to disturb your meditation this morning. Oh, that's okay. I'm more worried about your eyesight. What do you mean? Oh, well, Reg, you may need to go to the eye doctor to get your vision tested. And you can get yourself a pair of glasses. Excuse me? Hey, what's wrong, Reg? I have glasses. And I also wear contacts so that everything around me is crystal clear. Glasses are pretty cool. Oh, yes, I agree. Glasses are very cool. It's just that, well, I, I, I'm just nervous about doctors. <laughs> oh, I understand that. I know a really nice frog optometrist in the folktale forest who you'll like a lot. Optometrist? That's the official term for an eye doctor. Oh, uh, I don't know. Oh, come on, Reg, let's go. Right now? Yep, right now. We're going to rip off the Band-Aid. Oh, but I don't like Band-Aids either. We just need to walk straight past the mystical oak tree. Oh, hello, Sir (laughs) Oakleaf. And then let's walk right around the corner here at the Weeping Willow. (laughs) Oh, there, there. No need to cry, my friend. Let me just leave him this little tissue packet. And then. We're there. Wow, you live conveniently close to the eye doctor, Jonathan. Well, after you. Oh, no, 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 no. After you, my dear friend. (laughs) Why don't you hop up on my shoulder, Reg? We'll go in together. Hmm, that's probably for the best. Uh, excuse me, hello? Dr. Robert Frobbles? Ah, Jonathan, it's been a bit since I've seen you. Welcome back. Having trouble with your glasses? Nope, I'm just here with my buddy, Reg. He's up here on my shoulder. Wait, no, uh, Reg? Oh, that's, that's odd. Uh, let me just turn around here, uh, see if I can find him. Where did, where did he go? He, he was up on my shoulder. Oh, if my eyes don't deceive me. It seems your friend has crawled down your back. <sighs> Reg. Who? Me? <laughs> uh, n- no, uh, I- I'm fine. Uh, look, I can see all the way to the Cliffhanger Mountains and back again. Hmm. Uh, take a look at this wall where these letters are and tell me what you can read. Why, all of it, of course. Uh, let's see here. Um, H 
G, Z, P, and I. Uh, actually, Reg, that says N, C, S, P, and L. Well, at least I got the P, right? Oh, there's no need to be nervous, my friend. Just hop on over here, and we'll get you a prescription in no time. Ah, uh, 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 all right, uh, Dr. Frobbles. Uh, psst, Jonathan? Now, what's up, Reg? You think you might tell me a story? You know, to, to calm my nerves? Oh, of course. Ah, uh, let's see here. Um, oh, I know. How about a story of another hero of history? Ooh, that sounds like a perfect distraction. Uh, Dr. Frobbles, you might be interested in the subject I have in mind. Oh, is that right? Today's hidden hero of history is... Patricia Bath. Dr. Bath was an ophthalmologist, inventor, and humanitarian. Oh, that is quite a riveting topic for me indeed. <laughs> Wait, I'm confused. Dr. Frobbles is an optometrist, but you said Dr. Bath is an uh, ophthalmologist? Did you mean to say that, Jonathan? I did indeed. You see, Mr. Reg, optometrists examine, diagnose, and treat patients' eyes. So if you get a new prescription or a nice checkup on your eye health, you come to an optometrist. Ophthalmologists are eye doctors who perform medical and surgical treatments for eye conditions. Oh, I understand now. Patricia Bath was born in 1942 in New York City's Harlem neighborhood. Her father was Rupert Bath, the first black motorman for the New York City subway system and her mother was a domestic worker. Both of her parents inspired her love of academics. Ooh, that's fantastic! Her father, who also occasionally wrote for a newspaper, taught Dr. Bath about travel and the importance of exploring new cultures. Her mother bought her a chemistry set, sparking her interest in science. I think it's wonderful that her parents started her off on such a high note. At age 16, Dr. Bath applied for and was awarded a National Science Foundation scholarship. What is the National Science Foundation? Is that like Once Upon a Time's SFCF? Uh, that depends. What's the SFCF? The Science Foundation for Critter Folk. <laughs> it's an organization that supports scientific research and education. Uh, so. Yes, exactly. Back in my home world, that's exactly what the National Science Foundation does. As a result of her scholarship, Dr. Bath began a research project with the university and the Harlem Hospital Center. She studied the connection between cancer, nutrition, and stress. This led her to some incredibly important discoveries about the nature of cancer including a mathematical equation that could be used to predict cancer cell growth. While she was in high school? That's right. The head of the research program recognized how significant her findings were and published them in a science paper. Her research also earned her a feature on the front page of the New York Times. At age 18, she won a merit award in Mademoiselle magazine for her contribution to the project. Simply incredible. Uh, you mentioned she was an ophthalmologist and inventor as well. Right. So Dr. Bath graduated from high school after two years and attended universities to study chemistry and medicine. She graduated from Howard University with honors in 1968 and eventually began her career in ophthalmology. Well, tell us, how did it start? Dr. Bath began an internship back in her home at Harlem Hospital, and the following year started a fellowship in ophthalmology at Columbia University. During this time, she discovered that individuals from under-resourced communities were twice as likely to suffer from blindness than her other patients, and they were eight times more likely to develop glaucoma, which is a type of eye disease. 
That's right. She learned that many of these cases of eye disease were actually preventable. So she created the Community Ophthalmology System, which promotes eye health in a more accessible way. Yeah, that's right, Dr. Froppers. The Community Ophthalmology System increased the amount of eye care given to people who were previously unable to afford treatment. Wow, that's amazing! Dr. Bath was a humanitarian and was involved in many efforts that went towards bettering the lives of others. For example, when she was in school, she co-founded the Student National Medical Association. It's now the largest independent student-run organization that focuses on the needs and concerns of black medical students in the United States. Oh, Jonathan, did she also teach? Yeah, Red, she was a teacher. How did you know? Well, it just doesn't surprise me that she would want to inspire students after everything we've learned about her. Hmm, very astute, Reginald. As we had learned about so many things that she accomplished. Uh, but you said that she was an inventor as well. These hidden heroes always have wonderful resumes, Doctor. I'm not surprised in the least that there's even more to say about Dr. Bath. Yes, and being an inventor is one of the things she's most well-known for. In fact, in 1981, she began the process of creating the Laser Faco Probe, for which she received a patent in 1988. The device created a less painful and more precise treatment of cataracts using laser technology. Such an important step forward for the field. With the invention, Dr. Bath helped restore the sight of individuals who had been blind for more than 30 years. Way to go, Dr. Bath! One last very important thing to mention about Dr. Bath. Throughout her schooling and career, she achieved many firsts. Why, whatever do you mean by that, Jonathan? Well, let's see. She was the first woman to lead a postgraduate training program in ophthalmology, the first African-American person to serve as a resident in ophthalmology at New York University. Wow! Oh, Doctor, I'm sure there's more. If I know anything about these extraordinary folks, it's that there's always more. She was the first African-American woman to serve on staff as a surgeon at the UCLA Medical Center. Well, surely that's... Up, up, just wait, my friend. Oh, and Dr. Bath was the first African-American woman doctor to receive a patent for a medical purpose among other firsts. And there it is. What incredible achievements. Yes, Dr. Bath's story is truly unforgettable. <laughs> I couldn't agree more. And after hearing that wonderful tale, I think I'm ready to get my eyes examined, Dr. Frobbles. I've learned it's such a great privilege to be able to sit here in your office and make sure everything's up to stuff. Way to go, Reg. Well, all right, Reginald. Let's take a gander at those peepers and get you a prescription for some reading glasses. I think I'd like some lovely wire-rimmed reading glasses. Oh, that sounds nice. Something circular. Ooh! Or maybe some bold black frames. <laughs> Haven't gotten his prescription yet and is already thinking about the fashion. Ooh, what if I did a fabulous color? Purple, uh, red, royal blue. Yes, any color that has royal in its name would truly suit me, don't you think? Absolutely, Reg. Absolutely. Now that will look unforgettable, Reg. Hidden Heroes of History is a John in Character production. This story was written by Molly Murphy and performed by Jonathan Cormer. Sound recording and production by Jermaine Hamilton at Hamilton Sound Studios. Reach out to us on Instagram or email us at dorktalestorytime at gmail.com. Find links in the show notes 
or go to dorktalesstorytime.com. Now, go be the hero of your own story, and we'll see you next Once Upon a Time. So gather your squad. Dork tail.